Tanya. I'm so excited to be able to share these awesome books with you for Tiffany's party tonight. I cannot wait to share so many more than what I'm about to share with you right now, but I wanted to grab some ones that I know we're not going to really talk about tonight in the party that I really think will help get your daughter ready for that kindergarten classroom kind of idea. Now I have to give you a heads up that I am actually a mom of a four and a half, almost five year old as well. She'll be starting kindergarten in February. Um, we homeschool, so we do it a little bit slightly differently, um, but we'll be starting kindergarten in February. So I'm doing some of the same exact things that I'm mentioning to you as well, because it's super important to get them really prepared for what they're gonna be experiencing. So the first thing that I wanna mention to you is read, read, read. I can't mention that enough. There's something that we do all the time. There are so many great storybooks. There's some new ones that came out. The biggest story is phenomenal. It's a great way to get your kids expressing their imagination, but I wanted to grab three that would really fit with kind of where you were um, as far as what her interests are. So the first one I'm going to share with you is actually a new title. We will see it a little bit tonight, but I wanted to share more in depth with you. It's Yoga Animals in the Forest. This is going to be a new series that we do. It is phenomenal. Number one, it helps them de-stress, which is going to be a big factor this coming year, I think, um, but it gets them into the right positions for yoga while telling a story. And I love that it incorporates all of these really cool animals that you're going to see across the entire series. So Yoga Animals in the Forest is absolutely fantastic. We love that one. I want to dance. You mentioned singing, and whenever I think of singing, I think of dancing as well. We absolutely love to sing and dance here. Um, in fact, one of our favorite books is a ballerina book. And this happens to be a storybook. So again, read, read, read. I Want to Dance is absolutely beautiful. The illustrations are great, but what is wonderful is it's about this little rabbit that wants to dance. And she goes through all of these. <laughs> it's hilarious. She goes through all of these with these animals that are going to help with the costumes. They're going to dance and they are dancing with the ballerinas and it is absolutely beautiful. So I Want to Dance is another one that is fantastic for read aloud. Another series that I really enjoy is the one written, written by Lynn Parrish Sutton. This is Once Upon a Time Late. The one I was thinking about for you is actually upstairs in my daughter's room. It's actually called Animally and Animal Lee. Um, it is fabulous. I love them. They're great for really learning adverbs. So it's a really fun read. I love you flowingly like Rapunzel's hair. I love you observantly like the baby bear. I love you sweetly like Hansel and Gretel. I love you unbreakably like Excalibur's metal. There are so many gorgeous illustrations. If she likes fairy tales at all, this is a fantastic book. Animally does the same thing and it has a bunch of animals. It's absolutely beautiful. Another one by her um, is also, where is it? Let me see, also an animal. Um, that one is also fantastic for this. I just love the diversity in this book. Um, on top of everything, it is just so beautiful. But then at the end, I love you everlastingly, once upon a timely. I love to read with you beside me. Absolutely fantastic book. Love it. Okay, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and we're going to talk more about learning style. The number one thing that I recommend to all people with four-year-olds is sticker books. Oh, sticker books! Ah! The ones my daughter really enjoys are the little sticker dolly dressing books. Um, the newest one, let me grab it really fast because I did not pull it out. The newest one is actually Costume Parade, but one of the things that I love about these sticker books, they have the characters and the names, and they have short little blurbs about each one of them, and then they have the page numbers that are associated. They're perforated, you can tear them out, hand them the book, put it with the page, and it helps them that way. Now I've noticed my daughter is starting to learn her numbers because of this, which I think is fantastic, but it's great for fine motor skills for that idea of puzzling things out and putting things where they need to be. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my favorite series that we have, but it's the little sticker dolly dressing books, and they are fantastic for fine motor skill development. Another series that is absolutely wonderful at the same time is our White Clean series. Our White Clean series comes with a pin, a white clean pin, but really any dry erase marker will work on these. I love that they have, they are thick pages, which is phenomenal. They clean really easily with just a paper towel. And what I love is that they really give you great 
images that are fun. They're all illustrated similarly to this, but the ones I recommend for your age range is actually beginning pin control and pin control. Those are fabulous. There's also mazes and there's some other ones where you get to draw for drawing that are fantastic for really helping kids develop those fine motor skills that are so important when you start into kindergarten. So those are great. There's also letters and numbers and things like that as well. We actually started with cursive, so they're a little bit out. We do have a starting cursive book as well, White Claim. So check those out. There is a new one that is everything you need to know before you go to kindergarten. So check that one out. That is an actual white clean book. It's brand new before you go to school. It is brand new this release. Now I will also say there is a book by that same name, What You Need to Know Before You Start School, um, that, that we also carry that is very similar to the white clean, but it is not a white clean. It is actually a reading book. So that one is really well, really good as well. Our phonics readers, again, that read, 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 I love these because it helps my daughter really recognize rhyming schemes. The staff all look fun, all look fine in maroon uniforms with bright shiny buttons. Stand by, unicorns! The doorman salutes and points to the door, but he spins it too quickly. Lord Stork hits the floor. It's great for that idea of really moving along a story with that rhythm and rhyme and really gets them to help. And then there's also uh, comprehension questions in the back, which really, really help as they get older. So check those out. We have the regular phonics readers, Let's see, like this. Oh, nope, that's the wrong one. Let me see if I can grab it. Hullabaloo at the Zoo is our newest phonics reader. Here he is. It is paperback. They are $6.99 a piece. But then if you get the, the combined volumes, they are $14.99 and they have six stories in them. So much better value. Although I do love the new titles, which you can't get in collection yet. Okay, other ones that are great for that age range, the numbers. This is Dotty and Dashes one, two, three. They are pop-up numbers, but it's a story. So it goes one through 10, and then it's gonna jump up by tens to 50, and then it's gonna jump up to 100. What I love about this book is it'll take them through kindergarten, and what's great is you actually get the number line on the bottom. I adore anything that's gonna give me a number line for my kids. I am an actual math and science teacher. That was what I did before I became a stay-at-home mom. And I love anything that's gonna give me something on a page that's gonna help place what we're talking about into a larger scenario. So anything that has a number line on it when you're talking about that and then highlighting just the part that's going to be discussed on that page is great. You'll see that also with our Alfie and Betts ABC. Same thing, it's an alphabet storybook. They're fighting over which letter is best, which I think is hilarious. But if you notice on the bottom, you will see the alphabet and you will see the highlighted portion of what we are actually learning on that page. So it is fantastic. I love, love, love everything that we have that's story-wise. It really catches my daughter's attention. Okay, last, well actually not last, I have two more things to do. This series, this is our preschool series. We have lots of them in this series. This is Lift the Flap ABC, Lift the Flap Numbers. We also have Lift the Flap Nature, Lift the Flap Shapes, Colors, um, First Math, which is great kindergarten material. So when she's actually in kindergarten, it's adding and subtracting up to 10. So those are fantastic as well. But what I wanted to mention about these is that it's not just rote memorization. So again, we're gonna deal with that highlighted part that we're gonna be learning on those pages. But instead of just knowing ah, apple, it says the names of these things all start with different sounds. Say each sound and lift the flap to see the letter that matches. So it's all going to be about phonics. I love that. I love that this book really works with that. Can you see something in this picture that starts with each of these sounds? Lift the flaps to find the answer. Ah, it's gonna be apron. Here's your apron. So I love that this book goes all the way through the alphabet doing that same exact thing. It is phenomenal. Same idea with Lift the Flap Numbers. Really with weather and seasons, all of the ones in this series, it's going to be more having them think it out. Now, I will also mention this. We have a, an app. It's called Teach Your Monster to Read. The app 
actually costs money unless you catch it on a free subscription, but the website Teach Your Monster to Read is completely and utterly free. My kids love it. My son is in second grade. My daughter, like I said, is preschool going into kindergarten. We all love it. It is a phonics-based early reading program. It is wonderful and it's completely free on the computer. So check that out, teachermonstertoread.com. Okay, now we're going to talk animals because I know that you said that she loves animals. One of our series, Questions and Answers, about an uh, Lift the Flap Questions and Answers, this is a great series for her age. One of the great things when we're looking at this is it's going to give small chunks of information instead of a large wall of text. This means that she is going to have great a great time looking at it herself and not get overwhelmed and then bringing it to you and sitting down with you and really exploring these topics who what why when and how yes or no all about animals and i love that it comes with some really great questions that kids really ask because we all know they ask close to 500 questions a day then lastly, Life Size. Life Size is my favorite for four to seven year olds. In fact, it's a bestseller for my kindergarten and first grade teachers when I go to schools and do book fairs. Life Size is a great book on comparisons, but what is it comparing? It's comparing the animal to the child. Up until they get about seven to eight years old, they're gonna be comparing themselves to the world around them. Not so much each thing, object to its to something else, but to themselves. This is important, and in fact, that's what Life Size aims to do. Life Size is going to take real size animals. So for instance, here's a polar bear's paw. That is the actual size of the polar bear's paw. It tells you to give the polar bear a high five. How does your hand compare to that polar bear's paw? So it really gets them thinking about what these objects are. And then the next page, so here we have a giant squid eye. They get to see how big their eye is in comparison. And then it's going to give you a page that's going to talk a little bit more about that animal. Giant tongue of a giraffe. I love that. But then lastly, it's going to give you some math to work out. This book is 12 by 12 inches or one foot squared. It's going to give you the number of books that each of these animals actually is. And it's going to tell you, oh, okay, this giant squid is 60 life-size books. Do you know that means that he is 60 feet tall? Compare yourself to that. And you can pull out tape measures, you can do all sorts of stuff to really encourage and engage children with that math concept as well as the comparison between the animals. So I hope this helped. I hope that you saw a lot of books that you absolutely love. I cannot wait to share more books with you tonight. Please ignore my daughter that ran past here. I don't think she has any clothes on, um, but that's just what it does when you work from home. Have a wonderful day, and I hope that you have fun tonight. Let me know if you have any questions.